Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting Please be seated. Hello and welcome, graduating class of 2021 and esteemed guests. I'm Jefferson College President, Dr. Gina McCaffrey, and on behalf of the Board of Trustees, the faculty, staff, and administration, I want to welcome you to today's 56th commencement ceremony for Jefferson College. Before we begin, I will introduce the platform party. From my right, your left, is Board of Trustees member, Mr. Ron Skaggs, and Acting Vice President of Instruction, Dr. Christopher DeGeer. From my left, we have Vice President of Student Services, Dr. Kimberly Harvey Manis. As we begin our celebration today, we would like to acknowledge those in the class of 2021, along with faculty, staff, family members, or loved ones who are military personnel, veterans of the United States Armed Forces, or those who work in a healthcare or public service capacity. We honor you, we thank you, and we sincerely appreciate your service to our country, especially over the past year. Will you please stand? Thank you. Finally, we would like to extend a special welcome to the families of our graduates. Without a doubt, college students require considerable support, and the college recognizes that without the encouragement and sacrifices of family members, our students would not have achieved all that they have. So, if you are a parent, grandparent, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, spouse, child, or other relative of a Jefferson College graduate, please stand. Thank you. The college would also like to acknowledge a number of faculty and staff who have or will be retiring this year. You'll find the complete list of names in your program. Combined, they have over 250 years of dedicated service to the college and our students. Please stand. We sincerely thank each of these hardworking professionals for their esteemed years of service to Jefferson College and wish them well as they transition to retirement. It's also appropriate to reflect briefly on those former employees who, whose lives were lost during this year and last academic year. They include former staff members, Rose Cooney, 
Dan Ellington, Ron Frost, Kathy Henson, Barb Schaefer, Audrey Breerlin, adjunct instructor Rama Namani, former professors James Newman, James Watson, Tom Schusler, and Gwen Walsh, former associate dean and professor Sally Borgerson, former dean Paul Moore, former president Dr. Wayne Watts. The college sends heartfelt condolences to the families of these former employees who faithfully served our students and community. Please join me in a round of applause to thank them for their contributions to Jefferson College. <laughs> Graduates, as you know all too well, this past year was marked by a lot of uncertainty and heightened anxiety surrounding the COVID-19 pandemic. Although these circumstances caused everyone to adapt to new ways of life, and to think about our respective roles in creating a better society, as our students, you are to be commended for your determination, flexibility, hard work, and resilience. To, to paraphrase the familiar phrase, if you can handle this, you can handle anything. By graduating today, you're laying the foundation for a better life for you and your family. Regardless of whether you are planning to go to work, enter the military, or transfer to a four-year institution to continue your education, promise yourself that you will uphold Jefferson College's values of success, integrity, and service. Never forget to reach out and give back. Keep your connection with Jefferson College alive, knowing that you are part of a great tradition. You are forever an important part of the Jefferson College family. You join over 26,000 extraordinary alumni who use their Jefferson College education in pursuit of careers, professions, and further knowledge. We have every confidence that just as you have overcome numerous hurdles to be where you are now, you will make your way through the challenges of tomorrow. The entire Jefferson College family of faculty, staff, and administration join us in celebrating your new beginning. We have some special graduates with us today. Due to the pandemic that arrived in our region a year ago this past March, we were unable to host an in-person graduation ceremony for the class of 2020, opting instead for a virtual ceremony and then, in, and then an invitation to join us here today in 2021. So please stand and be recognized if you are a 2020 graduate. Thank you, and congratulations once again. Before we award all the certificates and diplomas, here's some interesting facts about the graduating class of 2021. This year we are awarding 592 degrees and 78 certificates to 662 students. 369, or 55%, are receiving a baccalaureate-oriented associate degree. 301, or 45%, are receiving an Applied Science Career and Technical Degree or Certificate. 28 students are earning their certificates with distinction. 118 students are earning their degrees with cum laude honors. 53 students are earning their degrees with magna cum laude honors. And 31 students are earning their degrees with summa cum laude honors. To give credit to our graduating students also requires giving heartfelt credit to our dedicated faculty and staff who have prepared and challenged our students to be competitive in a classroom and wherever life's next challenge may take them. At this time, I ask that our faculty and staff who are with us today to stand and please join me in recognizing them. Thank you. One of the long-standing commencement traditions at Jefferson College, dating back to the first ceremony in 1965, is a greeting from the Board of Trustees. This year, given the emphasis on safety and social distancing, board members recorded a series of short congratulatory video greetings, beginning with Board President Steve Meinberg. Please turn your attention to the video screen. Congratulations, class of 2021. 
Today is a benchmark in your life that you'll remember forever. Thank you for choosing Jefferson College to be a part of your bright future. Again, congratulations. You've earned it. You once had a dream, but today you're an achiever. Congratulations on this very special graduation day. You studied hard and showed us how it's done. Congratulations to the class of 2021. We honor the class of 2021 for your hard work and dedication and your journey to success. Congratulations, class of 2021. Although you endured a lot, you stayed the course and finished strong. Great job. As you graduate from college, remember that life has so many wonderful surprises in store. If you continue to work hard and dream big, you'll go far. Congratulations. Thank you, Board of Trustees members. It is now my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, Jefferson County Circuit Judge Daryl Missy, who pre-recorded his remarks for today's ceremony. Judge Missy has led a distinguished law and judicial career and is known for his advocacy of and compassion for children. He currently serves on the Supreme Court's Family Court Committee and has served on the Juvenile Detention Standards Review Committee and the Children's Services Commission. He was also a finalist to be selected to the Eastern District Court of Appeals panel. You can read more about his background and illustrious career in your program. Again, please turn your attention to the video screen. And without further delay, it's my pleasure to welcome the Honorable Judge Daryl Missy. I am so honored uh, to be with you today. Uh, I do not intend to take long. Uh, I just want to pose a question uh, tell a story, give you an example, and hopefully leave you all with some things to ponder. I love graduation speeches uh, because in them you get a lot of good advice about how to succeed. My question for you today is how will you know if you do? How will you measure your success? I think that is a very important question because how you answer it will set your priorities and help you make a lot of decisions going forward. How will you measure your success? You know, for me, I always thought, you know what? If I come to a place in life where someone would invite me uh, to speak at a graduation, then, then I would be a success, right? So, so Dr. McCaffrey, I want to thank you for this opportunity and your invitation because now I have arrived because of you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You know, actually, I am kidding, but we all have things like that in our mind, don't we? We think, if I can accomplish this particular thing, if I get that opportunity, if I get to go to that place, then I will be a success. And a lot of times, that all revolves around money and power and prestige and fame. Sometimes it's about competition, where you have a particular rival uh, that you want to outperform, right? Or maybe you're really, really competitive and you want to be number one, right? Uh, so you're following the philosophy of that great teacher, Ricky Bobby from the movie Talladega Nights, when he said, if you're not first, you're last, right? Listen, folks, I urge you, don't think that way when you're measuring your success. Don't do it. Don't think about those things. Uh, one of my favorite books is Rick Warren's Purpose Driven Life. And in the first line of that book, he makes it clear what he thinks is important. And it is not about what enriches you. It's not about what empowers you. It's not about what promotes you. It's not even about what fulfills you or inspires you. In the first line of the book, he says this. It's not about you. He says it's not about you at all. And then he proceeds for the rest of the book to tell us that what we ought to do is be working for the good of other people. I encourage you to measure your success that way by what good you can do for others because it's not about you. I first began to learn the lesson that it's not about me really early, which brings me to my story. So when I was a freshman in high school, I ran cross country. And I was really pretty good, but I was never the best, except for that one day when I really was. If you've seen a cross country race, you know, it starts out like a buffalo stampede, right? Everybody's running in one direction. Well, I was at the front of the herd that day. And for some reason, at the end of the first mile, I was still in the lead. And then it got in my head. 
it got into my head that that race was about me. And I thought, hey, I could win. I mean, I could win the whole thing. Out of these 50 or 60 guys out here, I could be number one. And you know what happens if that happens? They're going to read my name tomorrow in the morning announcements. That's what happens. It'll be posted. It'll be posted on the, on the bulletin board outside of the gym, and everyone will know that I'm a legitimate athlete around here. Won't that be cool? Well, about that time, I came to the hill. Every good cross-country course has a hill. So as I started up the hill, I looked way up there, and my freshman coach was up there, and he was excited. He was jumping up and down and cheering, and I was like inspired by it. So I'm running even harder, and I, I get halfway up the hill, and he's waving his arms, and he's still yelling, and, and I'm just digging to get up to the top of this hill. And I get to the top of the hill where he is, and he jumps in front of me, and he yells at me, and he says, Daryl, stop! You went the wrong way. You're feeling my pain, aren't you? Yeah, it happened to me. I went the wrong way. Way down there at the bottom of the hill, there was a cone. Uh, I thought I was supposed to go to the left of the cone, to the right of the cone, but yeah, I thought I was supposed to go to the right. I went to the left, and so I went the wrong way. And the only way for me to stay in this race is to go back down the hill and run around the cone the right way. Now, what I wanted to do was sit down and cry. That's what I wanted to do. But dutifully, I went back down the hill, went around the cone the right way, and started back up. And I went from being first to much closer to being last. Well, I caught a few people going up the hill. I caught a few people going down. Uh, and then over the course of the next mile, I caught a lot of people. Uh, and eventually, I got to a place where I could see the leaders way up in front of me, and I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to catch them. And I did it. I did it. I caught the leaders. With 200 yards left to go in that race, I caught the lead guys. And then it got in my head again, and I thought, hey, I could still win. You know, so I reached deep inside of myself where all those sports programs tell us there is that certain something that we can dig into and still prevail, you know, like the Gatorade commercial, is it in you, right? I reached deep, deep inside to find that thing, and it wasn't there. It was not in me. I was done, finished, spent. And so those other two guys moved on ahead of me, and I finished that race in third. And so I lost. I failed. Or did I? It all depends on how you measure success. If you measure success based on what it does for me, yeah, I failed. That was a disaster, right? But I was so surprised. My coach came up to me. He congratulated me on a job well done. And he let me know we won that race that day because I finished third. If I sit down on that hill and cry, feeling sorry for myself, we lose. But because I hung in there, and I did my part for my team, we won. Now listen, I know this is not a big deal. I mean, I'm talking to you about a freshman high school sporting event from decades ago before most of you were born. I know, nobody remembers this. I'm virtually certain nobody remembers that day, but I never forgot it. I never forgot it for the lesson I learned that day. Because what I learned, it's not about me. It's about us. On that day, it was, about, it was about my team and my teammates. That is the lesson I learned. I hope it's a lesson you all will learn, that it's not about you, and so that you will measure your success, not based on what you can do for yourself, but what you do for other people, for teams you serve on, for companies where you work, for customers you serve, for students you teach that you'll measure your success by the good that you do for those people, that you'll measure your success based on the good that you do for people through your work and in your family and in your neighborhood and your community and everywhere you go. You might know people who live like that. I certainly do, which brings me to my example with which I will close. When I graduated from high school, we had senior superlatives. And my class voted, and we elected a young woman named Andrea as most likely to succeed. And we did that for good reason, because Andrea was driven, and she was a born leader. And, you know, Andrea had all the tools. 
right? She was smart. She was attractive. She had high energy. She had great people skills. She never met a stranger. And we all thought, you know, Andrea is going to be the head of a Fortune 500 company, or she's going to be a United States Senator, or anything else she wants to be. That's what we thought was going to happen with Andrea. And Andrea and I went to the same college, and many people were surprised when she decided that she was going to major in education. And she uh, graduated from college, and then she spent three years teaching eighth grade reading. After she did that, she went to work full time at a church in Midtown St. Louis, working with inner city kids and college students. She did that for 10 years and then went to work part time, again, working with youth, but during which time she focused a lot of her attention on her three daughters that she was raising. After they got to a certain age, she went back into education and is now a high school English teacher. And in one of the greatest blessings of my life, I got to have a front row seat to see the wonderful and selfless way that she did all of that because I now have been married to Andrea for almost 32 years. Now, I started this with a question. I'll end it with a question. Did we get it right? When we voted that Andrea was the most likely to succeed, did we get it right? It all depends, folks. It all depends on how you measure your success. If you measure it based on money, power, prestige, or fame, we got it all wrong. But if you measure it rightly, if you measure it based on the positive impact that a person has on the lives of others, then Andrea Shock Missy is simply the most successful person I know. She is a stunning success. And you can be too. So, with that, class of 2021, I want to congratulate you on your graduation and for your future, I wish you all great success. May you measure it well. Thank you. And now we've arrived at the moment you've all been waiting for, to acknowledge those who are earning their certificates or associate degrees, including the Associate of Applied Science, the Associate of Arts, the Associate of Arts and Teaching, the Associate of Science, and Associate of Fine Arts. Will all candidates for certificates and degrees please rise? Dr. McCaffrey, these candidates, having completed the requirements established by Jefferson College, are recommended by the faculty to you for their certificates or associate's degrees. In accordance with this recommendation and by the authority of the Jefferson College Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the respective certificate or associate degree with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Candidates for degrees or certificates, Please come forward to receive your diploma cover. The second row of candidates will now approach the stage. All other candidates may be seated until they are directed toward the stage. Halloween Allen, cum laude. Dakota Anderson. Aaron Barrett.
Timothy Booker. Tara Ann Boyer. Christopher Bridgman. Ida Castile Munez, cum laude. Jessica R. Conway. Andrew Dufour. Nico Leanne Dufour. Emma Louise Eilerman, cum laude. Corey Lynn Embry. Haley Finch. Emma Fisher. Joseph Fisher. Garrison Gosling. Gabriel Philip Nathaniel Gregory, cum laude. Jonathan David Gregory, cum laude. Mary Elizabeth Harvey, magna cum laude. Madison Lynn Hayes Gowan. Isabel Lee Hendrickson, magna cum laude. Kelly D. Hunter. Nathan Hunter. Riley Jennings, cum laude. Kylie Klugel. Jacob Karobi Faraci, cum laude. Joshua Looney. Justin Looney, Certificate with Distinction. Ryan Jeffrey Mayberry, Magna Cum Laude. Congratulations. 
Daniel Mirinda. Frank Munashi Mutandi. Jacob Vincent Ortman, magna cum laude. Marco Panaccione. Katerina Patkova. Jessica Marie Prince. Molly Rapp, cum laude. Trevor Joseph Riando. Jacob Reinigel. Tajay Romel Reynolds. Grace Ringling. Heather Rogers. Chandra Shastine, magna cum laude. Jeremy Michael Thompson. Fletcher Tornator. Matthew Brandon Van Meter. Jasmine Tierra Wallace. Elizabeth May Wasser, cum laude. Alexandria Weaver. Bailey Marie Windholtz, cum laude. Samantha Winnestoffer. Evan Witte. Abigail Mackenzie Woods. Jessica Wynn, cum laude. Madeline Elizabeth Zitch, cum laude. Let's have one more round of applause for the graduating class of 2021. Thank you. Each year, associate degree students who graduate with the highest scholastic standing 
are acknowledged for outstanding scholarship achievement. These graduates have a perfect 4.0 grade point average. Outstanding scholarship recipients, will you please rise? As you approach the stage in one line, please come forward as I call your name. The recipients of this year's Outstanding Scholarship Achievement are Luke Caleb Adams, and Deborah Ann Stansbury. Congratulations again to the Outstanding Scholarship Achievement recipients. Would the graduating class please stand? Please turn your tassel from the right to the left, signifying you are now a graduate of Jefferson College. Ladies and gentlemen, I present the class of 2021. We would like to thank everyone for coming today with special thanks to all the graduates, parents, family, faculty, staff, and guests. Please remain at your seats until the recessional is over and your section is released. Please remember to share your photos and videos on social media using hashtag JeffcoGrad. We'll be posting the photos on our social media account next week. Class of 2021, never has a graduating class been called to step into the future with more purpose, vision, hope, and compassion. All of us at Jefferson College are proud to have had the opportunity to teach you and learn from you in achieving these de defining milestones. We're so pleased to share in the excitement of your graduation day and so very proud of you. Let's give the graduating graduates one more round of applause. <laughs> 